Place Spring Open House for 57 years. Uh, and this is kind of, we invite our vendors in, uh, the people that grow the stuff, the people that create the, the life. I mean, some of these things, I mean, a couple of these guys, they actually found this plant, patented it, grew it, and then introduced it to the planet, and then they get royalties off of every plant sold, no matter who sells it or who grows it. I want that job. That's pretty good, but I just call them friends. So it just hits hang. Gardeners like hanging out with other people that love fancy flowery gloves and big hats and sunblock and talking plants. Latin is, is okay. So that's kind of gardening. So that, that's, that's why you're here. I'm going to show off some of the new plants. I'll see if the vendors do it, the growers, the breeders do it. Um, and if they don't, I'll step in and show them. I'll make them look better. So. Four or five days away, but I'm officially calling today the first day of spring because this is the warmest morning I think I felt since nice. October. So today it starts. Start planning. Uh, yeah, I'm Jim with Monrovia. Um, I've been with Monrovia 30 years. Uh, Monrovia's been around a bit longer since 1926. Uh, we're actually the first uh, company nursery to uh, put plants in a container. Before that, they were uh, ball and burlap in the ground and heavy monstrosities that uh, you couldn't ship very far because of the weight and you know didn't last very long in the garden center, etc. So uh, years ago, we started putting them in containers, uh, metal containers back then, and um, currently now we started in uh, Monrovia, Southern California, and now we are in uh, four locations: Visalia, uh, uh, California, in the Central Valley. Uh, Willamette Valley up in Oregon, and that's where uh, all of Ken's product comes from, is those two locations. We have two locations on the East Coast in Georgia and Connecticut. And I want that product, you just saw it, let everyone know, peer pressure, so. <laughs> yeah, try to get some stuff, Georgia grows some neat stuff yeah, that sure uh, do. we oh can gosh. use here too. Uh, so hopefully we'll get some of that stuff in too. Um, Monrovia, like Ken said, we are kind of more of a, a high-end you know, product that we do. I can put a set of hands for you if you want, and actually show it off well. Um, you know, with any good grower, it's not what you see. You know, what you see on the top is what you see on the top, and you know, if it looks pretty on the top, and there's probably a really good reason for that because that's what's underneath in the ground there. It's kind of like the engine in your car, and you know, in our soil mix, if I sell you alone, we have 28 soil mixes in I sell you for different types of plants. We have 85 nationwide different soil mixes that we use uh, for different type of plants so that they perform the best. We also use a mycorrhizae in our soil, a little liner plug, little liners. We use like 20 different strains of mycorrhizae. We ship all over the country. So wherever that plant goes in the country or Canada, one or two of those strains of mycorrhizae will survive in the climate that that plant is shipped to. Why should they care? <clears throat> Mycorrhizal, you're really deep in this stuff. So. Yeah, I don't want to go too deep in that, but mycorrhiza, it, it's a beneficial fungus, basically. And what it does, it acts as an extension of the root system. Um, it can actually go out another foot or two, these little fine fungal hairs that you really almost can't see, but they are a symbiotic relationship with the plant to provide more water and nutrients to the plant. The plant return provides sugar to the uh, fungi. Basically what he's saying is it's a game changer when you're planting this plant because it will root bigger and deeper. Because it tickles the feet so they actually root more. That would, I'll go with that, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. an awesome thing. <laughs> I mean, mycorrhizae is natural in all our soils, but especially a lot of times when you go through, you put a new home in or whatever, and you grade off the top foot or two, you've actually sterilized your soil. So. That's a, a benefit of why we actually add mycorrhizae to our soils because a lot of our plants go to new homes, etc. So. Now you brought this magnolia up for a reason. I did. Why don't you talk about that? Because that is super unusual. So I'm going to grab it for you to show it off here. I actually have two of these in my house. This is called uh, Magnolia Bracken's Brown Beauty. And as the uh, leaves age, they will turn a dark brown underneath. Uh, but what's more important about this magnolia is it's very hardy down to zone 5, minus 10 to minus 20 degrees. I too have planted one, had great success with it. Uh, Ken has a couple, he's had good success with it. Um, seems to hold up really well in our climate. And has a, just like a regular southern magnolia, this has a 
large, large big bloom to it, very fragrant. Um, great. It's, I think we listed at 30 to 50 feet, but here in Arizona, it's not going to get that big, don't panic. But probably could get up to 20, 25 feet maybe over time. A little, little slow growing. It's but. probably 10 feet. It's about where I can just reach, and it's about seven years old. I planted this size, and now it's up. It's maybe double its size in seven years. So maybe it grows. Yeah, six, 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 yeah, but it, that's what's nice about it. It's not an overpowering. And it's not wide. It's, it's a little more narrow. It's yeah. Maybe it's like this. So, but it's evergreen and just gives you some uh, green year round. How, how did yours hold up in the snow load? You know, it did great. So, because it's narrow, I did go out and I swept the weight off. It had some weight on the, on the lambs, kind of went 20 inches of snow at my house. Kind of waited on just brush it off, and it looks like it's ready to go. Just and it has the smaller leaves compared yeah. to a regular southern magnolia, which has large leaves, which would be a, a more of a problem in the snow. So I think the smaller leaves, it holds up well. Yeah. But yeah, I, it's a great little plant. It's, magnolias are unbelievably versatile, hardy. They grow anywhere from Phoenix to here. I mean, that's how hardy these plants are. They can take a lot of adverse conditions, soil, etc. So fun little plant. You'll only find this variety in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Just see the price. Waters Garden Center. Is there any kind of disease? I don't know of any not, issues with that with the magnolia. Not any disease not, on it. Yeah. Nothing. No, none. No, no, I mean, just no. Full sun. Full sun. Yes. <laughs> I got mine in part shade. I don't know, just because my neighbor's got a huge willow that I wish would die, but just is there. <laughs> polluting every place, so no, you have to screen that off and a fountain in front of it, and it's just really pretty. Even in the desert areas, they, they use a lot of sun down there, even, so it's, it's a really versatile. It's got a real waxy leaf, so it doesn't, doesn't evaporate. No, no it's, it's evergreen. Yeah. I do have the deciduous variety of uh, magnolia as well. That's the ones that have the red flowers, the yellow flowers. Uh, this one has the white, it's a little bit bigger flower and, and white, very fragrant. And there are a couple of the deciduous ones blooming down in the lower house that are very, very, very pretty right now. So are they fragrant, the flowers? Yes, the flowers are fragrant. Just, Super fragrant. It's got all, all the positive attributes of a regular southern magnolia, the large flower, very fragrant, evergreen, yeah. How about in a large pot? A, a large pot, yeah. Right, about like, you could grow a large pot about like that for years, years and years. So we gotta move on. You're allowed to talk one more plant. And I'm okay, getting that right. microphone away. Okay. I know you can keep going. He and I have taught classes together. I interviewed him on the radio before. So oh yeah. And then let's say let's go Patty, you wanna go next? Is that okay? okay? Come on up, so he's got pressure on it. <laughs> okay, we have a here, do this. Okay. Show off the camera a little bit. Oops. They're not quite ready yet, so I don't have a real live sample, so this will have to do. Um, but this is called uh, Helianthus, some believable brown-eyed girl. It's a, a sunflower is what it is. And I mean, who wouldn't like a plant that could possibly produce up to 1,000 blooms in its life cycle? It's an annual, but it can, it's been reported to, in trial testing, bloom up to 1,000 blooms in its life cycle. Um, it's, you don't have to deadhead it. It just keeps blooming and blooming without deadheading. It's a great container plant. You can use it in the ground. You can get up to maybe a foot and a half, two foot tall, spread out two to three feet wide. Uh, you can take full sun, partial shade, but the more sun the better probably. You can take a lot of heat. And we're gonna have these available to waters, hopefully within the first week or two of April. Sooner than better. I'll yeah. take them as soon as they're in bloom. Um, so yeah, this is a very new plant out, and it's just gonna be a wonderful plant for, especially for your patio and container especially, that's gonna give you color all through the summer. It is an annual, so you know, as soon as it gets cold, it will die out. Is it sterile? Does it have a seed? Can, can, you, can you come back? No, it is sterile, so it's not gonna, well, it's, that's good. Yeah. Like yeah. All right. Yeah. And then so we'll come back to Lee, one, Lisa so. and I flew up to Oregon to do see the test trials. This is a big deal. So it's like an elite group, and they had some of these out. They're showing it off last fall, and we both looked at it and went, oh, "That is 
was so cool. They were in full bloom. They were about this big around, about that tall, just in, in, in like cachet pots. And we went, how many can we get? We want as many as you'll ship to Arizona. And so we'll see those April or so. Yeah, first one of April. I love it. We'll yeah, take it. So. You'll be giddy about it. But full sun, it's more of a summer, it's a summer plant. So we don't want to bring them in while it's still frosty and stuff. And sunflowers, this is a sunflower. It looks like a flower about like that. And it just blooms and blooms covered. I mean, you can't see the foliage, it's covered in flowers. It's amazing. New strain of sunflower. Yeah. Thank you, Jen. Do you have a question? Do rabbits eat them? <laughs> you know, I would say no. You say no, but they miss them. Yeah, they've got to, you know, sunflowers are they're natural. They grow, you'll see them on the side of the road. So they've got a natural defense against uh, javelina and rabbits and deer. They got a real fuzzy textured uh, stem that causes them to scratch their throat and stuff. So they've got a defense in there. Whether this one, I don't know yet. We need a test victim. <laughs> yeah, like Ken said, judging by other sunflowers that have been wild in my yard and stuff, I've never really seen anything to eat them. So. But you know, if you do have trouble with rabbits, maybe in a container that's a little bit higher. So give that microphone. Do they away. come back every year? No, no it's a, it's not going to receive. It's an annual. Oh, okay. Jim, it's just a beautiful give the plant. name one more time. Uh, it's a sun believable brown eyed girl. Sun believable. Like sunflowers, unbelievable. You'll know because they'll be on every end cap because I'm going to get hundreds of them. And trust me, that's not enough. They will be gone within. I mean, as soon as they show up, they will be gone within. Just like that. I'll probably shoot an Instagram, Facebook, or I'll mention, I'll mention it. Yeah, I can do that. I get a plant of the week or something. Yeah, I'll be glad to do that. Yeah. Patty, Patty is with Grow Well. Years ago, I got tired of all the cheesy, cheap soils that are out there. Everything is about soil. You get the soil right, and plants grow. You get the soil wrong, they sit there, they may not die, they just sit there and they look at you, they cross their eyes, they stick their tongue out you, they're going, I am not gonna grow here. That is it, I'm out. And so when I got up my game, potting soil, I had some super soil. Sorry, I'm probably gonna see some insist. Oh, really? You two to... like each other, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> so I had super soil load come in from California, which is supposed to be the best soil back in like the 90s. And then I opened up the bag and, and fungus gnats are, coming, are just coming out of this bag. I went, that is it. I had mulch. I had a horseshoe that came out of my, my mulch pile uh, out of a generic, you know, Kellogg's. It's a big name. And I went, that is it. These guys, they are not quality controlling enough. They're just, they're shoving stuff in a bag and calling it whatever's on the label. I need better quality. So I went to Grow Well, a local company down in Phoenix, a local Buckeye. Uh, and I said, here's my, here's my recipe, here's what I want, can you do it? It took us like a year to kind of negotiate this whole thing, but they make all of our soils. Our barn garden manure, which is deodorized, thank you. It's not gooey, gross. You guys put your hands in it. It's not going to stink up the back of your Cadillac. It's actually going to, it's going to be, it's a good manure. Uh, and it's multiple manures in it. Uh, they make our mulch, which is a, a locally sourced compost. It's, it's an additive. They make our potting soil, which we had a growing operation for many, many years. And you got to have the right growers mix or, you, or seed them all will dampen off or, or melt down or have issues. They'll just die. They had to get a better soil. So we played with this recipe for two years. We still test it every, every couple of years against everyone else. And nothing grows better than our potting soil. Seriously, <laughs> not just ego. Guaranteed, nothing grows better. And that's when I had the super soil was a good potting soil that had fungus gnats. Ours is always fresh, never has junk or pests in it. Uh, and one of the topsoil. So with that, I could be your assistant to hand out stuff or what you, what you got going here? That's, just a, that's a pamphlet on all of the soils. So okay. it tells you what that soil oh. is all about so that after you forget this, you're going to do a shop and everything. We, we hope. <laughs> you have there you all go. the information. It also we do we have enough? Their, um, their fertilizer, their um, organic all-purpose fertilizer. So if um, that does have the information on their fertilizer for them. Um, as Kit said, 
Um, our company's been in business a long time. Oops, been sorry. 25 years now. Um, we've actually been in the Valley for about 50. Um, we started as a uh, company out of Heber and then moved into the Phoenix market because that was a much bigger market to make soil and things like that. What we do is we are a recycling plant, basically. We recycle wow. green waste for, uh, for the um, municipals in Phoenix. We also take in a lot of green waste things from the tree trimmers and all those. But we're very selective on what products come into our yard. We do not take anything in the way of any poisonous plants such as oleanders, palm fronds, things like that. We do get wood waste from ca uh, cabinet making companies and things like that, but it's all the wood that has never been finished, like just the pieces that they need to just dispose of and things like that. And then we are in the Southwest the largest colored wood mulch and uh, mulch producer. Now there's a difference between compost and mulch. Mulches are, are things you top dress with. And so we do produce like all of the red, brown, uh, black mulches you see. They come in, they're chipped, they're put into bag, they're, they're colored with an organic dye and chip. And then we screen a lot of that because you can't use the fines. And the fines are what are put into our, our compost piles to make our products that go in the bags. So we are like the sixth largest recycler in the state of Arizona. If that, if we were not recycling, a lot of that product would just go into our landfills and just fill up our landfills like crazy. So we're pretty proud of that because we try and be as, um, utilize that as much as we can. So I want to explain a little bit about soils because um, it's very important to use the right soil for what you're doing. Potting soil is a soil that can be used for just about anything. You can use potting soil, of course, in a pot to plant a plant. You can use it as a t um, in your raised beds to plant in. Potting soil has everything in it that's going to sustain the life in that container. Okay, so if you have a garden and you even want to put potting soil in your garden, say you have a bag of potting soil and you just want to get rid of it because it's been sitting there a while, you can mix it into your garden. The difference is compost or garden soil or the products that are going to be less expensive, say topsoil or steer manure, are not going to have everything in it to sustain your life, right? The plant's life. You have to go with a quality product like a good potting soil if you're potting in a pot or in a container. So that's a big rule of thumb as far as what you need. Potting soils will have a compost base. That's always going to be the base of the product. And then we mix in different amounts of heat moss, different amounts of, say, perlite. Perlite is those little white pearly things you see in there. That's for aeration. And or vermiculite. Some will have both vermiculite and perlite in them. It's just the, the more products you add in, like the perlite, the vermiculite, the peat moss, is what's going to sustain your moisture and your aeration in that soil. You have two minutes. Okay. If you have just compost, you can use compost to enhance your garden in the ground. You can use compost if you have potting soil already in a raised garden and you want to just enhance it to give it more aeration. You can use compost and those type of soils in that garden, but it can't be, you know, it's not something you're going to directly pot in if you're just trying to fill up a pot or something like that. The other thing is steer manure. They have a deodorized steer manure. We call it deodorized because what we do is we compost that steer manure. We add in some gypsum. We usually add in some compost and everything. And it is composted so that it's weed free and it's salt free. The salts are leached out in the composting process. Regular steer manure comes in, it just gets put in a pile, a little compost gets mixed into it because it won't go through our baggers raw or wet like it comes in. It may be in our yard for maybe a day or two and then it goes in the bag. It's going to have weed seeds in it, it's going to have salts in it, and so if you're using steer manure, you can use it like in your garden or anything, but make sure you're putting it way ahead. If you're going to do a spring garden, you put your steer manure in the fall so it sits in there and compost is leached out and everything, and then you're ready to go if you're going to do that. But you don't want to use steer manure right away when you're going to be planting your seedlings because you will burn your seedlings. You'll get salt burn. You'll get um, too much hot nitrogen out of it because it's so composting and everything. Now, or, they're um, organic fertilizer. One minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's recommended to be used on a regular basis. It is going to be a very slow release um, fertilizer so you can use it all year long. You can use it in the summer. You can use it in the winter. And it's going to keep maintain your root growth, it's going to maintain your flowering, it's going to maintain everything you need 
when you use their fertilizer on a regular basis. I know Kim recommends like four times a year at least to use their fertilizer. And it also is helping enhance that soil and keep your soil healthy, keep it growing, keep your root system strong. So don't forget to, with your good soil, you want to make some good food. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> So we're giving away um, a little, like, you know, baggie full of potty soap, so you can find some in it. Are you potting up pots? They brought some all the doctor pots when you, you go. To. Yep. Take advantage of her. She's like I'll professional. I'll be glad to pot it, or you can just come in and we'll do it together. Yeah, that'd be fun. Whatever you want to arrange it. Yeah, I'll be here until two. Thank you, Betty. So, oh, okay. we'll trip you up. Got it? Yeah. Thanks. So, I mean, we even go so far in our recipe of the potting soil. We have a certain gauge of peat moss that we like because it drains a little better. There's actually a lot to it. We've got a 555 organic, so we call it organic. We don't add a wetting agent. Almost all of your potting soils have a wetting agent, which is not organic, totally chemical. Because that's one of the most expensive things that's in a, in, a, in a soil. So we decided to go without so that we could say it is truly, or you could grow a tomato in there and it would be 100% organic. Now we're a tiny place, we can't afford to go have an Omri certified and all that stuff. But trust me, my name's Ken, I'm your friend, I'm also a gardener, it's organic. So, but you can go right on there, because I'm an organic gardener, I don't want to. So you'll, it'll take a little bit to wet it up, but once it's wet, it stays moist, it's so nice. For the love of gardening, whatever you do, don't take a container, take the soil out of your earth and put it into a container. Because after the summer heat comes, what you just did, you created a brick. So it just heats up and becomes even more solid than it was in the yard. You want potting soil. That's what you want in your raised beds or your, your containers. With that, I'm going to give it up to uh, Chris Shipley. Chris, I just call him, he's, he's one of these smartest growers. I mean, true breeders. This guy patents plants and introduces them. And we sell his stuff. Really? i got to do this to him, too? Yeah, you know, we would look good in kilts. <laughs> anyway, uh, a couple Irishmen up here doing the thing. Uh, anyway, Chris is, he's got Savannah's nursery. He's got a retail garden center down in Tucson. He's also got a, probably the foremost growing operation for the Southwest. If you want a Southwest plant, he's the guy we go to for that. And so your agaves, yuccas, cacti, uh, interesting, you know, drought hardy sage, a lot of the native stuff. He's the guy I go to. The, his farm ships in every week. And uh, because we have such a great relationship, he's way too busy to be here. He should be in Austin selling plant loads of stuff to them. He came up just because we're friends. So. Uh, with that, tell us about Savano's, what you got going, what we'll show up the plant, and it's all yours. Well, thank for, you. For seven minutes. Seven minutes. <laughs> um, Chris Shipley, one of the owners of Savano Nursery. It's another family business. Um, we have our family garden center in Tucson, and then we have an 80 acre growing facility in Tucson as well. Um, it's run by my brothers, my two brothers, my dad, and my, my wife. My wife is our garden center manager now. Uh, we started 21 years ago. And uh, I was a lot younger then, <laughs> but we're still going. Where are we all? Yes. <laughs> Ken, um, Ken dared me some years ago to grow plants worthy of great garden centers. So about six years ago, we really stepped up our game to um, focus on garden center quality plants. And with that, we started. We started with our Sabana Select line, uh, which bears our company name, and. We started, we started on that endeavor, and then uh, we were lucky enough to um, have Monrovia recognize us, and we're a partner grower with Monrovia. So we provide some of the perennials very in a very limited way to fill in the gaps um, that for perennials, uh, two garden centers. So it's a really big honor for us to do that. Um, we'll pick up a perennial. Mind, uh, I'll get the plant. Which one do you want? The two gallon. Um, I'll be the Vanna. Yeah. So, we ship plants. So, this is a oh, large one that we grew under the Monrovia brand. Pick up the dead head. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Monrovia doesn't offer that in a two gallon size all the time. So, we pick up a niche and we, we try a two gallon Galardia celebration. So, a little bit bigger, a little bit different. 
Uh, all of us can't grow everything in every size, so we just pick up the niches where we can. Do this one too? Yeah. That's, that's in the Savannah's pot. The Arizona right Sun. Yeah. So really fortunate to be able to wake up and grow really pretty plants. And I, our growers, I tell them on, on the retail side, please, you have an opportunity to grow beautiful plants. I'm not worried about the cost. We'll figure that out later. Your job is to grow the best plants possible. And for in Arizona, that's not a normal conversation to have with your grower. It's please make it inexpensive, less, it, it's going into landscape and highly competitive projects like I-10 or I-17 road widenings, and the cost is a huge factor. But when you can only buy six or seven galardias or 20 galardias in your life, as a homeowner, you're gonna to wanna to buy the best one possible. So we put the very best soils, um, very best pots, tags, signage, customer service we can into and care and passion into the plants. And I wake up every day thinking, how can I grow better plants? And it's a wonderful thing. So today I brought um, from our mountain in Tucson, Mountain of Marigold, which is a great plant for here, has a highly aromatic fragrance that animals don't like to eat. But it's uh, an attractive fragrance to us, uh, but not to them apparently. I should rub that as you oh, walk down uh, the yeah. aisle. <laughs> yeah. You folks on Facebook, you just wish you were here. But a nice native <laughs> perennial. We, we do a lot of native perennials for, pre for Prescott. And that's cold hardy. One more plant. One more. This plant. one is animal resistant. It's local. It's from Mount Lemon, a very high altitude um, uh, uh, marigold as well. It will naturalize for you. Super drought hardy. And again, you are only going to find this at Waters Garden Center. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> I only sell to Waters True. Garden Center. That's it. No other garden centers. Did you say that? It's pretty. Yes. What's that? Will it receive? Will it receive? Um, it's, it's not going to freely just go around your yard, no. but it, it will produce some seed. But it's not prolific seed or it's going to come up everywhere. Next year, will it be this big? Yes, oh, and yeah, every yeah, year it'll yeah, be a little yeah. bigger for the, until it gets to its mature size. Perennial will come back every year, and, yeah. and you folks in that wildland interface, you've got herds of like 20 javelina roaming through the yard. They're, eat, they're rooting up everything. They don't bother that. So rabbits are not going to bother that. Same with the Galardia. They don't bother this. It's perfectly fine. It naturalizes. If you're a bird gardener, this forms a little seed that they'll spare up through winter. They'll use the seed as a, as a food source to get through winter. It's a great little one. Every year, you have one of each. Last plant. Last year, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, do a okay. Yeah, which one? <laughs> do the Moroccan? Moroccan. Yeah, you got it. Moroccan mouth. So Ken, a few years ago, dared me to find some cactus that could possibly that aren't normally sold around here and he goes if, if with some care they could survive Prescott because not a lot of cactus that are attractive survive cactus to be honest um, so I came up with um, four five six cactus um, for Ken to try out he's been trying them out and he puts them in protected areas either in the pot or in the ground with good soil good drainage um, this is Moroccan mount um, native to Morocco it will just get bigger and more beautiful. It has a very unique uh, shape and look. It likes, it doesn't mind winter water. It, it, it can, a lot of cactus don't like winter water. This one will accept winter water. You get rain here in the winter and snow a little bit. Um, on your coldest nights, when it gets below 10, you should be covering it, um, maybe 13, but it'll get through most everything in Prescott. So if you want to be a little more adventurous, there's a few different cactus that we brought that will be coming up later in the season, next couple weeks, to try out. But just remember, the odd time you are going to have to cover them. Um, some of these cactus has some very unique flowers. Uh, the torch cactus over there gets huge flowers. Now I only said one more Oh, plant. yeah. So, <laughs> we keep going very, down the line. We can keep going. We could go for hours. Thank you, Chris. Let's go with Eric. You want to come up? Yeah, go ahead and give it up for I do have a rocket down he gave to me probably three years ago. I put it in a pot. This is zone eight plant. We're zone seven, okay? Uh, 5,000 foot level and below, you're zone eight. You can grow this without any issues whatsoever. Uh, but that's going to be Dewey, Mayor, Humboldt, you know, Verde, uh, Valley Cottonwood, uh, Skull Valley, Kirkland, the lower elevations. 
for us up in the mountains, the higher the ridge lines, this one, I'm up at 5,700 feet. I get 20 inches of snow. I've had the pot right out there in full sun, on the patio, reflective heat. It is magnificent. I planted it this size. It is now this big around, three years. It's this tall. It is stunning. I mean, just stunning. I never water it. I mean, virtually never water it. What I do do, though, is in the winter, about November, sometime before Thanksgiving, I'll drag it to the front door underneath that overhang, and I just leave it underneath there. I don't cover mine. I figure if it dies, it wasn't meant to be, I won't sell that one. This one has not died, and so I'll bring it back and I'll sell it. But it's for gardeners. You all are gardeners. That's why you're at a garden class, and it snowed on Wednesday. I mean, it just says something about you. Uh, so this one I think would be very fun to play with. And then Chris has brought up more and more. We'll, we'll have more and more cat guy uh, available. What's the name uh, of that one again? That one is Moroccan Mound. Very, very, we've got some barrel look at some more looking things. <laughs> they're also zone eight. All these are zone eight. Which one is that? They'll go down to about 10 degrees. I was at nine at my house, maybe seven. Somewhere in there, the high single digits. And I did not cover that. It's out the front door. It looks beautiful. I'm about second, I think, we're done with any amount of 20 degrees. I'll bring you right out to the patio. That's where it will stay at the front of my house. Okay, so Eric. Eric is, I'm trying to go uh, plant dirt, yes. pesticides. And Eric puts together our fertilizers, bug killers. All the things that make plants grow, he's my guy. And so uh, he, he comes down, he covers all of basically the Southwest. Uh, but Eric, his company is Bonide Corporation. Let me just tell you how I find vendors. If I can sit down and have dinner with the owner, we can be a vendor. If you're a major corporation like Monsanto or Scott's or someone else, we will never be friends, and I'm never going to take you to dinner. You'll never buy me a scotch or anything else because you're dead to me. You're too big. I want small, family-owned because that's one of our core values. So Chris is a friend, and he's a family. Uh, family runs that farm. Uh, uh, I've had the owners of Monrovia here. They've helped me at a spring open house before. They've been here, so I know who they are. We've gone to dinner. Uh, so, and, and Bonite's the same way. So with that, what do you got in hand? This looks like something in, oh, burnout, perfect, here you go. I brought a cut, and it, it's really good to be with you guys. We actually, I, I was wondering if I was gonna make it here. Oh, we're gonna move over center, there we go. <laughs> Coming out of Utah and getting here has been a little rough. Airplanes have been canceled and such, so it really is good to be here. Stay away from the Max, I hear. Stay away from the Max. <laughs> you don't want to fly back. So, um, you know, we have had a great relationship with Ken, and, and we're excited to hear. One of the things that has impressed me about him is his desire to stay on top of things, but also to, to move into areas where he wants to lead out. And one of those areas is in what we call the naturals or the organics. And so what I did is I wanted to, to just show you two briefly that are great for your, for your yard. For your hand. Absolutely. Yeah, here. Okay. So, yeah, a couple, about four years ago, Good. we brought out a product called Burnout. Now, this is to replace the products that you normally would use for weed killing in your yards. This is everything green that you want to get rid of. Here's the difference. Show up on camera, okay. Yeah. It is a natural product. It's clove oil and citrix. So the citrix burns the top of the plant. The clove works to the root to starve it out. Wonderful way. It's perfectly safe for your pets, for you, you know, so we're not dealing with any, any caustic chemicals, anything like this. Fantastic way, and we have it in, in uh, concentrates as well as we can. We've stopped selling glyphosate. We're, there's new data coming out. We, it's borderline. It looks like it does cause cancer, and we're getting cases that just things are happening. Uh, we've been using it for decades, but it looks like it's causing some serious issues. And who's the guy that's going to get cancer? It's going to be the guy selling it. It's going to be me or you guys the manufacturing. But I'm not going to sell that stuff for my own health. I'm not going to torture my customers. So I'm going, where's the organic alternative? And I have researched for probably two years trying to find out. And this one, the burnout, works. It kills our weeds at altitude. It kills when it's colder. Uh, it just does better for mountains out deserts. <coughs> And we just wait until summer, they'll all die. I don't know. But up here, things keep growing. We got monsoons. We 
things start growing faster in the summer. So this one actually is the one I've gone to as a, as a truly organic, if you're an organic gardener, you can confidently go out and not kill birds, your pets, your husband, or anyone else. It's safe. One of the keys you just mentioned as well is cool temperatures. You've got cool temperatures here. Most products when you're trying to kill weeds, you've got to be about 65 degrees, 45 degrees. Big difference. Now, as soon as it dries, which is about an hour, it won't translocate either. So it'll stay where you spray it. That, that's a real key. Now, is that 45? Is that daytime or nighttime temperature? Or daytime. where do you? Daytime. Okay, so perfect. Even better. We're always 45. In January, we're kind of 45. Okay. We now, we beat her FE. FE, is anybody know what FE is short for? Her? Iron. 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 Exactly. Good. So we formulated iron. What we're after is a broadleaf now for lawns. So this would kill everything. Now we're just after something that will take care of the weeds in your lawns. Now, because it's iron, it's going to green it up as well and take care of some diseases. But the great part is now, as of this year, we have it in concentrate. So you can actually spray the whole lawn. We've been doing spot, you know, kind of this size with an RTU with it prior to this. But now we've got it so we can mix it and spray the whole lawn with it. Again, it's 100% safe. It, it's, it's formulated to take care of those broad leaves, but it's safe for you, safe for your pets, and it's a It's truly product. organic though, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's just, it's a fancy iron. How they come up with this stuff, I don't know. Both of these products are safe under your uh, bird seed feeders. Oh yeah. Spraying everything starts germinating. Absolutely, yeah. No problem. Yeah. Okay. This one I would use if you don't have a lawn, but you've got, you want more native grasses, but you don't want the, the dandelions and the foxtail or the uh, 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 goat head. There's all kinds of native weeds that are nasty. If you don't want those out, but you want to keep the blue brahmas, the buffalo grass, want more of a meadow look, that's the one. It kills every kind of weed except the grasses. Did I get that right? Exactly. Perfect. Yes. I all think right. you're, you've got one more. Okay, so okay. just briefly, we, we, you mentioned that you have a lot of animals, some animal problems, right? Deer? Deer, javelina, okay. So uh, gophers, gophers. Okay, so uh, we actually have. I'll be here. So if you want to come over and talk about gophers, we've got you've got some great product over there. What I want to talk about briefly is we we've actually found that we can actually move animals without killing them as well. So in other words, we have repellents, and we've become the leader in this industry. So let's say you've got some deer that gosh, they're coming in, they're chewing on some things you don't want them to chew on. We can re we can repel them. We can get them out of that area. Now, how we're doing it is we're using natural products that cause irritants to their eyes, their nose. If they're pesty enough that they eat it, even their stomach. Okay, so so you know we've got products that repel everything, but in our in our products that repel everything, we've got egg solids in that rotten eggs. So if you're going to use it in your garden, don't use that. You can do a border around it, but not inside the garden. However, with this product. You can use that inside the garden. It, it's actually it's hot pepper. Okay, so it, the animal, if they get it in their mouth, you know that's going to be that's going to be one hot meal, and they're going to stay away from that. For that. But one key I want to leave you with: when you're doing repellents, rotate them. Actually, I'm going to leave you rotate because an, an animal just like us will be used to things. So rotate. The other thing is, don't treat it like a fertilizer. Don't treat the whole area. What we normally say, especially like old, old gophers, and the, the product we have over here that if you want to come over and see me, I'll show you. Divide the yard up maybe into quadrants. We always tease a little bit and say, start in the backyard, start by the house, move to, just treat one, a couple days later, a couple more, and move, to, move the animal towards the neighbors you like the least. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, what question I have for you, you keep yes. that for a second, for my own use, for us, you've got some solid repellents and you've got liquid repellents. So you've got some that are granular, you spread on the ground, you've got some that are liquid, you spread on the foliage. When do you use the granular and when do you use the liquid and how do you interchange? How do you decide which one? Well how do I sell it to my the, my friends? So the, so the liquid can actually treat everything obviously. The the granular is going to stick around longer. Um, so if, if you want to create a more solid barrier, the granular is what you want to use. With the liquid the idea here is I can Actually treat the plant, especially with this one. Um, so, so I can actually take care of the, you know, the leaves and and be right at nose level. So, if I, if I've got an animal that's nose level, a little taller like a deer, a liquid, a lot of times I can get right to their nose level. Whereas granular, 
you know, or pack rats, or squirrels, exactly. or javelina, rip, rip, those uh, that are crawling around. Yeah, got gotcha. you. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Eric. Give it up for Eric. Thank you very much. Douglas, I'm going to start with a few flowers, so you're my flower man right on. Douglas and I go way back. He is, if you like color, flowers, perennials, he's our number one uh, guy for all things pretty. And so he's also a good designer, and he's a crazy smart gardener, just plant nerd. Don't talk Latin with him too much, but you can, I guess. That's probably a thing. Mm -hmm. Really? Keep going? That's all you have. Give it up for Douglas. <laughs> Armstrong Garden Center. Not family owned, but employee owned. Even, even better, because I can still go out with your president and go, yes, it's still one of us. So. Right. right. That's so right. What's once a family, and then when. Uh, yeah got passed out to all its employees, so really cool concept. Um, so yeah, so all in the color that is around us um, is, yes, from Armstrong Growers. We are uh, one of the largest uh, growers in Southern California. We have three distinctly different growing areas um, as far as climate, so we're able to put the right plant in the right place. Um, we are all about quality and variety, so we have a production team that travels literally the world finding uh, the best Varieties that are out and about there, um, so that we can bring to the independent garden centers. Um, so the cool thing, which one do you go? go for? We can do the ranunculus. You got it. Um, so right now we're just getting started, so I'm just going to kind of whet your appetite um, for annuals and perennials in the next. You'll have to come back over the, you know, the next eight weeks. We're going to have new introductions, uh, but these are some cold hardy uh, items. This is ranunculus uh, mache yellow. As you can see, really, really large petal count really vibrant yellow, um, also comes in an array of uh, other colors. Um, uh, competitors, your competitors, the reason I don't shop from them, mm -hmm. other growers, the rhinoculus will not be as big. It'll be a smaller or off color or blended or this. They grow a pure color and the flower is just magnificent. I can't, I don't know how you guys do that, but flowers twice the size of anyone else that grows out there. You'll find this at Home Depot or some other place, but it won't be this showy. Just because that's that you guys take care of. Right, yes, absolutely. Okay, what else? Uh, then we've got the tried and true pansies and the six pack. Yep. Um, so if we still have another cold snap, you'll still be uh, we golden, will. golden with these. Yep. Um, so another thing is we grow in all different sizes. Um, our six packs, as you can see, they're larger than our competitors. So you get better right. soil, better roots, uh, bigger flowers, um, and then also less transplant shock when you guys go to the ground or container. There's six packs. That he, he soft plays that. Some six packs, literally the cell, the root is this big. I don't know why they call it six pack. It's like three pack or something. <laughs> they aren't going to transplant. When you put them in the ground, they almost vaporize before your eyes with a transplant shock. His, they actually going on a super sized six pack. So, so they actually will take better. They're, they've got more roots. What you're really buying with a plant, you're not buying a pansy. You're buying truly a root. You're not blind, buying an apple tree, you're buying a root. You're not buying a lilac, you're buying, the bigger the root, the more substantial or hardier that thing will be, and the sooner that it will bloom. Six packs, be it a small six pack, it'll be eight months, I mean, it'll be the end of the season before it's actually, the roots are big enough to start blooming. His, you put this in the ground, it will start blooming right away. That's just, I can't say that enough about your six packs. And I don't like six packs. I like four inch and above. <laughs> um, Which one? Stock, four stock. inch. Yeah. So if you're looking for something fragrant, um, stock is your number one. Um, you're also going to get height. So whenever you're doing your, if you're doing pots, you want your filler spillers and thrillers, there's going to be your thriller. Um, really nice is that it, it takes the cold and then it'll go through the whole season up here. So, so. Yeah. And I've had good luck with that one. I've had one. I'm like a buffet. My front front yard's like lots of pots. So they kind of come to look. I don't even have to bend over. I can just eat everything. <laughs> this one I put in, and they don't. They don't even take that. And just smell it, and then pass it back to my other friends back here. It just it smells as good as a lilac or rose. Just, that's a great one in pots. You raise it up. It's better to have it up where you can just. It's there closer to the senses. Go ahead. Okay, and then we've got the Pansy Frizzle Sizzle. This is a new, <laughs> new introduction. Um, this one you will only find at Waters Garden Center. We did what we call a contract grow when a customer comes to us and wants something special. Uh, we don't usually grow it in a gallon. You can win in gallons for early season. Um, so we grew a couple hundred, and you can see um, they're displayed around here. 
Um, so it's good to have friends that are smart to know how to grow things. Here, I want, I want 200 of these. Crawl. Right. Hey guys. Yep. Yeah, sure. Good. Yeah. So these are cool. As you can see, the petals are they're frizzled. Sizzled. <laughs> um, we did. Uh, they're cute. Yeah, they're they're exactly. Really that. Really Pass that around too. <laughs> that just, and that one will take the snow, cold. Wow. It'll take whatever we have. It'll actually bloom better. Mine were actually popping through that snow that we had, the major snow. As soon as it melted, they were popping up going, yay, I'm happy it's cold. So they're just great for yeah, the Yeah, the snow insulates them and they really actually enjoy that. Wow. And then the last one I have is just for, for uh, just for gratification fun. is one of what we just call a uh, annual color bowl. It's just chopped full of um, items that'll do really well right now. So if you're not wanting to, to plant up your own pot, we have uh, items like this. Or you can cheat. I take this, and I've got great big, uh, you know, pillars with great big pots. I just tip this over, pop this off, and I plant it right by big pots. And look, instant garden. Look how smart I am. Hey, they've already done all the color combo stuff, companion plant stuff. So you don't have to keep it in this, but you can stay. You can also just put it right into wherever you want, crazy bed or whatever. Thank you, Douglas. Yes. Oh, and then I just, real quick, and then all the vegetables that are over on this side, they're all cold hardy. We're just starting to get into that season. Um, a lot of lettuces right now. Tell them how your vegetables are organic. So we are, yes, yeah, so all of our vegetables are organic. We, have, we also have a uh, collection that is certified organic through USDA and State of California. Um, which State of California is actually stricter. Crazy, than, yeah. Than the government. Um, but yeah, so um, with all the fertilizers and soils that Ken carries, um, you can fully that you're going to keep it all organic. Um, and then one last thing is down in the shop, you can, um, I invite you to check out our house plants and our succulents. Succulents are uh, all the rage right now. Um, we have those in two inch, four inch, and also yeah, that microphone. Cool. Oh. <laughs> and for a while, uh, his herbs are also organic. So you could graze the herbs, pick up that we sell his, his herbs, and one other a very small, Backyard jars are all organic, all natural. Strawberries, all you can go in and pick a strawberry, eat it, and just be confident you're good to go. So all organic, non-GMO. You folks that like to want genetically modified stuff. So Furlong is a not a family owned, it's co-op. We own it, so I'm one of the owners of Furlong, uh, and then we just this, you know farming agriculture is co-op. So you get together, and go how do we get stuff? And he's our representative for the Furlong or volunteer purchase group co-op. Did I explain that well enough? Pretty good. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> All right, my name's Andy. I'm with uh, BPG. We're a Texas-based company, and we are, we're a patron-owned company. So we have 10,000 dealers across the country, and uh, Waters is um, one of them, and our dealers actually own I'm one company. of 10,000. I'm one of 10,000. <laughs> so anyways, um, I, I apologize for the sunglasses. I just had a, um, eye surgery this past week. Really? So, I have uh, I had surgery on, which is a little uh, it's called bridging. This is a technical name. So, anyways, I had that taken off. So, my eyes are very light sensitive. So, <laughs> I apologize for that. So, I want to get into three things. Um, first one, we'll just go right into triple action. So, you're going to have spring is here, right? Today feels like spring. So, you're going to have bugs and you're going to have weeds, triple right? Okay, so Organic. right now here's triple action. Triple action does three things. It's a mycocide, it's a fungicide, and it's insecticide. This is a complete organic product. It's pyrethrins and neem is what it is. Neem is an awesome, awesome insecticide. It's one of the oldest pesticides around. It's Omni certified as well. Complete organic product. Um, Ken carries both the RTU and also a pork concentrate, and he's been advertising this and been using this here in his, uh, in his yeah. store for a while. This is our first go-to. If you have a bug, we just go try this first. It's organic, it's safe. All aphids, thrip, ciliads, anything that really is smaller, uh, fungus gnats, uh, in the house plant, any kind of house plant thing, this is your go-to. Grasshoppers, there you're probably doing this. So we switch to something. It is. It's a, a, it's a total context spray. So right when you see insects is when you need to spray it. Okay. So there's that one. The next one is humic acid. Okay. Humic is a little explaining to that. Um, one of the. going to make me lift 20 pounds for like yes. 90 seconds. 90 seconds. So one of the the plant growers talked about mycorrhizae, beneficial microbes. This is the product that um, humic actually feeds microbes. So um, humic is very, very beneficial, beneficial to the soil. Humic actually feeds microbes that are in the, in the soil for you. 
Uh, it also unlocks nutrients that are in the soil. Sometimes if you fertilize and fertilize and fertilize, you notice that your plants are not responding. Cubic acid actually unlocks those nutrients and makes it available to the plant's roots by feeding those microbes and the, and the mycorrhizae that are in the soil. Okay. Anytime you're seeding new lawn, new vegetable garden, new any kind of seed, you need this because it's going to help that thing root and go deeper. Uh, any stressed plant, let's say they come out of winter, they got kind of waterlogged and they're looking, those evergreens are kind of yellow looking. This is going to help green them up and get more roots. The, the summer stress on a, on a fruit a tree or a shade tree, this will add this with your fertilizer. You'll get a deeper, richer green and it will get a larger root root mass. It's a great product. Well done. So a 20, 20 pound bag covers a couple thousand square feet. Oh, and What's that? Oh, you can apply that um, as much or as little as you want, typically. It's not a fertilizer, so it's not going to burn. We recommend putting it on a couple times a year, spring and then summer. Summer is when you really see the stress of plants. If you miss a mistake, you went on that cruise to the Panama, came back and the irrigation failed, and you, some of the root structures dried up and it's showing stress, help put this on and help bump that stress, that root structure out. That's kind of how you use it. Come talk to us, we'll, I'll get, choose wisely. So one of the other vendors talked about uh, weed killers. Um, I like to prevent the weeds from happening. So um, what uh, Kim has here and has been selling for a long, long time in his nursery is uh, turf and ornamental weed stopper. So this actually just prevents weeds. This is the perfect, perfect time to apply a weed preventer. It's dimension and you sprinkle it on and it creates a little barrier at the top surface of the soil and prevents any unwanted weed seeds. It has a huge long list of weeds that it controls the feeding progress. I have tried a lot of different weed. I hate weed. Weeding and watering. Those are two garden tasks. I despise. Now some of you love watering. It's like a therapy thing. You're not even gardeners. You're just waterers. <laughs> Me, I don't I hate that. And so I don't want to weed. I don't want to pull a hoe out. I don't want to I don't want to weed. I don't want to, I want a rock lawn that is pristine, perfect. Not, not one weed growing up. I don't want weeds. This has got the broadest mix. And I've tried a lot of different competitors. This has the broadest uh, influence on our weeds at this elevation. So that's, where, that's the reason I sell it. It's not because of price or because your company or good, because it really works it's the best. A huge long list of weeds that it controls. 10 pound bag and covers 12,000. 12, 12, I believe. Uh, no, 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 six. Six thousand, yeah. Oh, right. wrong. Give yeah. me that mic. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Appreciate you. <laughs> Johnny. Johnny up here? Yes, get up here. That'd be great. <laughs> Johnny, he's a local guy, local boy, one of us. Uh, we go back. I like Johnny's tree service, okay? He's one of the sponsors of the radio show. He's a friend of the garden center. But I, I, that is a very rare thing because very few companies are actually quality. Everyone's trying to shortcut, they're trying to go by bid price, they're trying to go, well, just go by price and, and then I will take the shortcuts later. There are never shortcuts that I've seen uh, with Johnny's Tree Service and he's my go-to guy whenever I need tree stuff and I have done some major tree projects uh, that we've done together over the years. Uh, but I thought I'd give him, he's, after this, about 30 minutes after the class, he brought some of his equipment. And he agreed to uh, cut down a huge log. We're going to send it to the chipper. If you've never seen that, it's impressive. I mean, the ground moves, and we're going to see how long it takes to, to chew up a tree in the back of a chipper. Did I get that right? That is correct. Harry, yes. take this. Hello, everyone. You can tell them whatever you want. You have five minutes. Five minutes. Tell them about, you can totally tell them whatever you want. Websites. All right. All that. Thank you very much, Ken. So, Wonderful to be here. I love how the weather's warming up. Love to see all the awesome vendors here. Very educational even for myself, so thank you for all that. A um, little bit about ourselves. I am Johnny. I own Johnny's Tree Landscaping here in Prescott. I am a certified arborist. I also employ certified arborists to do work for you. Um, our job, all the rest of the people here are selling you plants, fertilizer, soil, very educa uh, educational, all that. Our job is to help you take care of all that. So we are a tree division, landscape division, maintenance division, irrigation. So if you have a plant, one of these awesome plants that you bought off one of these vendors or a water's and been feeding it and taking care of it, and you like, oh my goodness, it got too big. It got out of control. What do I do now? We are the company you can call to help with that, with that uh, amazing problem of a healthy plant or a not so healthy plant. As a certified arborist, I do a lot of consultations. I come into people's properties. 
walk it with them, look at the health of their trees, their plants, irrigation, soil. As a certified arborist, we are trained not only in trees, biology of trees, soil, fertilizer, water, how it all works together in a harmonious thing. Um, so it's like if you're having uh, issues, like right now we have full bloom coming out. We've been very busy pruning trees during the dormant season. This year we've had a lot of rainfall. These trees are going to wake up very happy. A lot of resources have been given to them. Our evergreens, they photosynthesize, respire all year long. They're going to wake up and be very happy. If you have issues with these trees growing way too fast, or just one is unwanted, or one didn't survive the winter stress, we are definitely there to give you a hand with that. Anything of a, in that nature, um, landscape, we're in for a huge, huge year of weeds, <laughs> things that grow, things that need maintenance in that department. Um, irrigation, when it gets hot, we're there to help you with that as well too. Um, like I say, we're gonna come, um, we're coming right into a big heavy fire season as well too. It's another thing to keep in mind. Because of all of the rain, our forests, our vegetation is going to go absolutely bonkers out there. Uh, you're gonna see stuff growing two to three feet in your natives, like your scrub oaks, your palmer oaks, all this stuff is gonna go absolutely crazy. We are also there to help you with that. If you need fire mitigation, consultations on that, we are certified this as well too. Um, kind of a one, uh, one stop go to shop um, as far as that goes. Um, if you need consultations coming up this year, um, that's a big part. Um, I'm a certified arborist, like I said, I employ certified arborists. So if you have questions for our foremans in the field about these uh, trees and plants, we spend a lot of time trying to educate you know, our employees to educate our clients. And like Ken said, we don't believe in shortcuts. It does take time to push, you know, to educate your employees to get these certifications and we want the consumer to benefit from it. Proper pruning and maintenance of trees, it's kind of something that has been neglected. Um, we're the only working certified arborist company in Prescott. Um, say I usually show up to your property, evaluations, estimate, and the real key point is, no, I don't send someone out to your property who doesn't know what they're doing. We actually send employees off to school to become certified and to become big, very valuable assets in this company and then we all treat it like it's our own. It's a big family. Like Ken says, it's a family thing. We love what we do. We love the trees. We are trying to bring an awareness that there is a difference. There is certain aspects of tree pruning that can be so detrimental, not only to the health of it, but the visual aspect as well. You can drive through this town and see so many projects that, you know, it just doesn't quite look natural. I've seen a tree. That looks nothing like a tree now. And that is what we're trying to get away from, an awareness. And the only way to bring this awareness is for us all to band together and understand the proper, the improper way of doing things. Um, and I really want to thank uh, Ken for the opportunity to help that message get out there faster and through Ken's help and for all your help. That is what we're trying to push for, certified arboriculture. There is a difference. There is a choice, and we want to help you make that choice and make the best choice for your trees, plants, and your garden as well, too. I love your soapbox. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, be careful. You'll see guys walking through. They say they're an arborist. Make sure you check for certifications. Call the Contractors Association. Make sure they actually they say things that aren't true. Make sure you do the background check. That I can tell you that Johnny's, they do, they are certified. And I've seen their work on my own property. I've seen what they do in the community. I am embarrassed by how trees are butchered here. Literally butchered. And they'll never recover. Once you do a bad job, they never, once they're lion tailed, all the growth is way out of it, they never recover. They are just, they're, they're, they're chainsaw at the bottom and start over. Which I have trees, I'm okay with that. But. Still, I don't know. Let's just do it right. Trees are something you do not want to make a mistake with. Shrubs you can kind of recover from. It's catching me up here. We're almost done, I promise. But I, I gotta leave you with some plants, right? And just leave you with you smart people to help you. This just came in yesterday. This is so crazy unusual. This is a dwarf Colorado spruce. Uh, it's called Sester Dwarf Spruce. Sester's a friend of mine up in Oregon. He specializes, he's, he's a goofball that does nothing but conifers. I love conifers, conifers are great. He grows our spruce, our pine, our fat alberts, or grows all those, but he also gets into the funky stuff. Now this is probably, it probably took him 15 years to grow this tree. Wow. I don't know why he did it, because it's a passion. Uh, but this one, if you've got, spruce get huge. We're talking 60 foot by 
16, 17 foot wide, perfect Christmas tree. They are way too big for most yards, especially the smaller yards. Bigger yards, put them away from the house. Help. Don't put them right next to the driveway where they're cute right today, because in five years you'll be putting them back because they're encroaching on your walkways, driveways. So this one will never do that. You can plant this in a raised bed, uh, featured by the front door, in that in that area by the by the uh, front door between the uh, uh, driveway, the, the, the garage, and the front door. That little bit, you can put that in there and it will never outgrow its space. So it's just funky. I saw it when I get all giddy. I've seen a lot of plants. It's just unusual. See, this is, uh, comparable would be uh, Alberta spruce, which is kind of common. It's green, it's comical. That's another one that's dwarf. You never see a Colorado dwarf like this. You just don't see that. And then lastly, while I'm on conifers, I go lastly here. This is a serpentine or weeping atlas cedar. The state hood tree down in the courthouse in Prescott, mm -hmm. that is an atlas cedar. It's been around us. It's a hundred year old atlas cedar. It's, this, it's the one they decorate at, at Christmas with all the lights to dance around. That's an atlas. This is related to that. Only this one grows to be grafted and then trained to be serpentine. You can actually take this and wrap it around your deck. It'll go uh, up a tree. You can train this to go wherever you want, or you keep serpentining it. And then once it's up to height, you just let it go and it just trails and flows. It's truly a, 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 a artistic plant piece. It's kind of like a topiary is how you would use it. It's just super crazy unusual. You find them mainly in spring at the garden center. We've got some bigger ones, but I couldn't carry those over here. They're too heavy. So we got big ones just to teach you. And then lastly, I'll leave you with this. Chris, uh, he had the Savanos. He grew this for me. He grew 150 of these. This is, we grew them just for this, this event. This is a wave pansy. Very unusual compared to other pansies. This one will actually get long tendrils. Down to about three feet. And it will cover, it's just covered with flowers. It will do this just covered with flowers. And uh, we grew this in a bigger pot than normal. So usually uh, most of your depots and warehouse places, they'll have a 10 inch or 8 inch size pot. We grew this in a 14 inch. It's three times the size, more soil. So you can hang this up and the wind is not going to vaporize it. It'll actually last. What I do with this is I pop it out of this hanging basket and I actually plant it in my containers. And this thing will just fill, it's a ground cover. Just fills. Most pansies kind of grow up and then flop over. This one won't do that. It keeps trailing. It keeps blooming like no other. We've got three different colors uh, of this particular plant. When I'm out, I'm just out. That's just kind of, there's no more for the season. We grow up for this weekend. So I'll probably have a week's worth and they're all gone. That's another thing I can tell you if you're new to the area, the way the garden centers work here. Uh, when you come in and you see it, I'm going to think about that. Go home and look at it, try to visualize where it's at. It will not be there when it, it will not be there when you come back. These are extremely limited crops. And they're very seasonal, trust me. I just had a good friend come in, he was gonna plant a Stella cherry. I had five of them, they had just arrived. He came back three days later, they were all gone. So I well, Mike, come over, I got, I got a secret stash back here. There's, there's three more back here. When those are gone, they're just, they're just, these are crops. It's not like a manufacturing machine where you push the button and more comes out the manufacturing. This is on a farm and it's, when that crop is over, there's no more until the next season. And we'll have more. So kind of, there's seasonality at the garden centers. With that, my name's Ken. I'm your friend. We had a whole staff here that'll hang out at 11 o'clock. See, in 20 minutes, we'll be down to the parking lot. When you hear a big machine fire up, going, that's a chipper. And Johnny's, thank you, Johnny, he's going to feed a, a huge tree. It's a phenomenon to watch. It's just entertaining. Uh, give it up for uh, my guests. Thank you.